Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm going to share with you my thoughts and impressions for the Key to Curriculum Math series. This is a series of math workbooks that go from percents, decimals, and fractions to metric measurement and measurement and up into geometry and algebra. So I'm going to start with measurement first and then we'll go into this pile over here. So the first thing I want to just point out is that these two sets of workbooks are actually really similar because one does metric measurement and the other one does English units of measure. And so if you go through the workbook, you'll find that the lessons are actually really similar. Now we went ahead and did both of these workbooks anyway, even though the material was similar, it just was good to go through both types of measurement. Now these workbooks are about 45 pages long. The paper itself is really thin. It's almost like newsprint paper. And for measurement, there are four books and it does come with an answer key if you decide you want to get the answer key, which I highly recommend. When we first did this program, I just got the workbooks thinking that I could just do the questions and figure out the answers and it was really way too time consuming. So I don't advise not picking that up. Now the, the workbooks are very simple. They are almost child-led, like you don't need a lot of instruction from a teacher. And this is granted if you're doing this at the appropriate age. If you're doing this a little bit younger than grade level, then you probably need to give more assistance to your child. But if you're doing this at grade level or even below grade level, like if your child is older than when you would typically do this, then you definitely don't need any assistance at all. The child can completely do it by themselves. The, or the information on how to do the, the lesson is very simple. It's very easy to understand and it only deals usually with one concept at a time and it goes very slowly and with just enough re repetition that it doesn't become too boring. The lessons are very fast, very easy. There isn't a lot of wasted space on the page. There's just enough space for you to do the problems if there's any problems that you have to work out and I'll show you more about that in the other sections where there there is more space here it's just really kind of tight it just has the question what you need to work on not a lot of extra space not a lot of extra kinds of questions just the questions that relate to the topic that you're learning I like this program a lot because it deals with very simple concepts until your child understands them well it's quite linear in its progression and it doesn't include other math and arithmetic into the program that doesn't relate to the lesson itself. Then there are the fractions, decimals, and percents. For fractions, there are four books and there are also four books for decimals, but there are only three books for percents. So the first book goes by quite slow and steady with the whole concept of fractions. And then it gets into multiplying and dividing fractions. And you can see there's a bit more space to work on, on questions, but not a whole lot of extra wasted space. There's some workbooks I see that j they just have a lot of extra space around and the pages are really thick. And I just feel like I don't want to produce that much waste while we're homeschooling or just in life in general. And so I feel really good about these ones because they just, they're, they're very thin. I feel like they're environmentally conscious. And of course you can recycle them when you're done. So this one is for adding and subtracting fractions. And what I also like about these workbooks are that there aren't a lot of questions they, it, it, within one page. There aren't a lot of questions and it moves at a very steady pace it doesn't go too fast and it doesn't go too slow. And I think that that is a very difficult thing to for a math curriculum to do. Sometimes you hear of students being bored because they're doing the same thing over and over again. And other times you feel like it's a little bit too stressful because you're moving at a difficult pace. Or the other complaint that I sometimes have is when there are too many different kinds of questions congesting the actual lesson that is trying to be learned. So sometimes in, a, in another textbook, you might find 
a, a section where you're adding and subtracting fractions, but then below that you'll have some word problems and then you'll have something on measurement and something on telling time and a little bit of review on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And while reviewing those things are good things, <laughs> they just seem to complicate the actual lesson. So if you want to do some of those other kinds of math reviews, I would suggest doing them separate from your math curriculum. And then there are mixed numbers and of course there's the answer key. All right, when it comes to decimals, again, the cons the workbooks go slow and steady when introducing uh, these concepts. So this one is decimal concepts. Again, the, the workbooks are about 45 pages long. At the end of the workbook, you have a couple pages as a practice test. And this does review all of... <laughs> I really can't get that page open. Here we go. Oh, here it is. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. It has a little practice test and it kind of goes through all the things that you learned in the book. There aren't any other quizzes or tests throughout the workbook. There is only this one at the very end. And then you have adding, subtracting, and multiplying decimals. And so again, there's more space to do questions, to work out the questions, but not like a whole lot. And again, not too many questions per page. Now, when my children are using this workbook as review, suppose they're in sixth or seventh grade and I want them to review decimals, I might have them do one single sheet front and back or two pages front and back. So that would be four sheets. But since it goes by very quickly, this never takes too long for my kids if it's something that they are reviewing. If it's something that's brand new to them, I might only just assign one page, just the front, and then the next day, just the back. So it kind of depends on my child's level, and that way I can kind of gauge how many pages to assign. Then it goes into dividing decimals, and again, there's a bit more space, but not too much. And again, not too many questions. I found that this was an appropriate amount of questions for my kids to understand the concept and I didn't need to supplement this curriculum with anything else. Now, on occasion, I do have to come in and either read the instructions to my kids or I need them to read the instructions or I need to actually do one of the sample questions on the board. This is actually quite rare. This is so self-explanatory that my kids tend to be able to do this on their own. On occasion with the algebra workbook, I needed to help my son and with the geometry one as well. And then with my third son, he needed a little bit of help with the fractions. But other than that, they've been able to do this really on their own for the most part. The percents have three books. There's percent concepts, percents and fractions, and percents and decimals. So I'm just going to give you a quick look inside this workbook and then show you percents and fractions. And so this is a really great way to review fractions as part of decimals. So I, I do fractions first, then decimals, and then percents. And then this is the percents and decimals. And of course, it comes with the answer key if you want. You can buy these as a whole set that includes also the answer keys, or you can buy them as individual, just a single workbook. I would recommend that you buy them as a complete set and work through them from start to finish. I've had the best success that way. Now, the geometry and the algebra are really different. The geometry is quite a bit more, you can see. However, there are a lot of blank spaces because with the nature of geometry, you're just going to be drawing larger things. And that's why the, these workbooks in particular, there are more of them and there are more uh, blank spaces within the book in order to do your drawings. It doesn't have any proofs or theorems or a lot of math that goes along with it. You don't need a calculator for this. This is more like understanding line segments and circles and circumference. So the first one is line segments and then the next one is about circles and that was actually the invoice from Rainbow Resource. I bought these from Rainbow Resource but I've also bought them directly from the Key2 curriculum website. This one is geometry called constructions 
And then after the first three books, you can also get the answer key, which has the answers and the notes for all the first three books. And for the answers, they are the exact same workbook page that you would find in the in the workbook but it's been shrunk down to quarter size so you get four pages on one sheet which is really great because you're not just getting the answers by themselves even in all the other ones it's it's nice to see the questions along with the answers number four is perpendiculars and what's also neat about the curriculum too is that the cover art on each of the of the workbooks actually has some it relates to the content of the workbook. And so it will tell you a little bit about the cover art and then there's some information for the student as well. And of course, there's a table of contents on the side for each workbook. Uh, workbook number five is squares and rectangles. And you will need a compass for this. And we bought our compass from an office supply store. We did buy a really nice sturdy one that has lasted now for three kids and probably my fourth kid. So I would say invest in a good one to begin with and it will last you for all of your homeschooling journey. And then there are two more workbooks here. And these ones are bound differently. They're the, the covers are thicker covers and they're glue bound. They're not staple bound. And this one has a far more pages. It has almost 160 pages. And then number eight is triangles, parallel lines, and similar polygons. And this one again has a lot more pages. There are no tests at the back of this book. And then there's the answer key for number eight. All right, the last set of books are the algebra books and there are 10 books and all of these are the very thin about 45 pages they're all staple bound and the first one is operations on integers so this goes about really slowly now compared to say eighth grade or ninth grade math this covers all of the same concepts but at a slower pace it is not as rigorous and it's not as difficult the questions stay very simple which i really like the third one is quotations equations sorry the third one is equations this is not grammar this is math <laughs> uh so Again, really simple questions, enough room to answer the questions, and they don't get really complicated at first. So this is very slow, very easy, very steady until your child really masters these concepts, especially with algebra. You don't want to move too quickly if your child isn't really feeling comfortable with the concepts. So doing another lesson or another course in pre-algebra and then going slowly with algebra I think is really good because it's the foundation of so much more math later on you don't want to have a ba bad foundation when it comes to algebra. Polynomials is book number four and you can see that it's getting a little bit more complicated but my my son is going through this and he's finding it that it, it's it's been manageable to do it this way. I don't need to explain too many things for him. There's the answer key for one through four. Rational numbers. And he's only needing a little bit of help from me. And really it's the, the most that I have to do is put, um, and it's not even in this book, it's, it's some, in some of the other books. I basically just reread what the example or what the the instructions are and then I might do one or two examples on the board. Now math isn't something that I struggled with when I was in school so this doesn't really frighten me when it comes to homeschooling and teaching my child but if math wasn't something that you felt really strong uh, at when you were in school you don't feel comfortable teaching it then this is a great way to help yourself out and help your child out because your child could do this almost completely on his or her own and also you can come in and help out really easily by just reading what the instructions are and doing one or two examples. So this was rational numbers. We have multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Then we have adding and subtracting rational expressions. And then book nine is systems of equations. And then 10 is square roots and quadratic equations. 
Okay, so I have used this program for three out of four of my children. My youngest is only six, so she has not gone through this. You can start this as early as maybe third or fourth grade, depending on your child's ability. I wish they had these for basic math. All right, if you've used this program and you want to tell me about it, please do so in the comment section below. And if you have another program that you absolutely love for math, I would love to hear about it. All right, thanks for watching.